Just a quick disclaimer, this video was recorded before the Bo Horvat trade of yesterday, but I do think that the message in and of itself is so constant that it's really okay to go out there and still make the video the way it was. So, without further ado, I had intended to upload this yesterday, but the Bo Horvat news obviously took over. Let's talk about the Canucks and tanking. The Vancouver Canucks are actually tanking, and I know it might seem very odd that I say that, hey, the Canucks have not been tanking, what are you talking about? They still have all of their guys, they didn't trade Besser, they didn't trade Bo, they didn't trade Garland, they still have OEL Myers, they didn't do anything to quote-unquote make the team worse, what are you talking about? The team is tanking, and I feel like this is sort of the come around conclusion that the team really is putting themselves in a worse spot. And it didn't really hit me until I saw a Reddit post. I know all my videos nowadays, oh, I saw a Reddit post, oh, I saw a Reddit post. But like, you gotta acknowledge, I'm not really that smart. I can't really do much on my own, so I kind of have to go to other parts like articles and Reddit posts to get material for the channel because that's how I'm gonna survive making YouTube videos. But like, there was a post made on the Canucks sub, and I thought this was extremely interesting. Take a look at this. The Dutch Ouch went out there and made this post on the Canucks sub yesterday titled, We Are Tanking. Big shout out over to this Canucks user and somebody whose post I'm going to link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this, share this yourself, because... I think it really does go out there and indicate parts of this team and its decision making that puts the team in a bad spot, and therefore, you could say they're tanking. For everyone calling for us to tank, the moves management has been making are consistent with having given up on the season a long time ago. No one will tell the players not to try to score or the coach not to try to win games. Would anyone want to re-sign here if the goal was still not to win every game? Here are some moves that show that JR and PA have given up on the season, but obviously are not about to publicly state it. Take a look at these bullet points. First, the starting goalie gets injured for an extended period, and we don't have a 1B. We did not make any moves to bring in a better goalie, and just struggled with two bad backups for months. Martin, unfortunately, is not great. There was a period where a lot of us thought that Spencer Martin would be able to maybe even dethrone Thatcher Demko, but that was quickly soon shut down when people realized that his glove side was weak, and the fact is, Martin has never played an NHL schedule before as a starter, and he started to struggle a lot more as the season went on because of it. Colin Delia is not necessarily amazing either, I mean, there's a reason this guy's not an NHL backup, but I mean, he's okay for what he is, the Canucks just had themselves a chance to maybe get themselves a better goalie, but it's either A, they believed in Martin so much, which kind of would have been foolish, or B, they just said, screw it, we'll roll with this, and whatever happens, happens. Here's point number two. A team's top six winger is injured and needs surgery. Instead of shutting Mikheyev down so that he's ready for the playoffs, they let him play, and then they shut him down so he'll be ready for training camp next season. Now, this is a little bit interesting because Mikheyev did say himself on a Twitter thread that he decided to play and do as much as he could while injured until this point of the year. He said himself that he could play through the entire ACL tear and not make it worse, so he did, and he got points and he did everything, but now he'll be out for the remainder of the season until the start of training camp. The Canucks could have gone out there and said, yeah, no, force this guy to take the surgery now so that he comes back for the playoffs, but they didn't. Point number three, two prospects with top six potential, Pud Colson and Hoglander, sent to the minors. These guys could have been taking minutes from other wingers that have trade potential. So instead of playing Pud Colson and Hoglander in spots where guys like Garland or maybe Besser or, dare I say, other wingers like Kuzmenko could have been playing instead, you send these guys to the minors, and it also proves that the Canucks know this year is a blank show and don't want to expose our young guys to it. 
And with the comments that we had seen from earlier today about how Pod Colson and Hoaglander are doing so well in the AHL and how the Abbotsford staff is really adamant on having them stick around and wanting to grow and develop them more. I mean, look, more development is never a bad thing, especially for two guys in Hoaglander and Pod Colson who weren't, you know, I mean, like they were good. They're NHL caliber players, but there was a lot to work on. And you could definitely see that their games were not as mature as they needed to be to succeed as legit top six caliber forwards. They still had a little bit more to iron out. Now, I'm not sure if going to the Abbotsford Canucks and coming back next season is going to change that, at least in a super drastic way, but it's better development where they can get confidence, where they can actually score points because they hadn't been scoring too many points. Neil Zoman is over there doing the same thing and like just seeing the Canucks willingness to say, all right, we have two guys that can play in the NHL. We're going to send them to the AHL, focus on their development and not use a lot of these lineup spots that we could have given to them, but instead give it to guys that we can trade away. That's interesting. Here's point number four, the Ethan Bear trade. Not trying to hit any home runs to improve this year, but getting a nice deal on a young guy that could be a part of this decor for many years. Now, I'd seen a lot of people freaking out about Lane Peterson because he did get claimed the other day by the Columbus Blue Jackets, and it's kind of funny because the Blue Jackets and the Canucks had played the night before Peterson got claimed, so the Blue Jackets got an upfront and personal sort of viewing of Peterson and how he's able to move and make passes and do the things that he's good at doing, and then they're like, okay, well, he's on the market. Waiver wire, excuse me, we'll take him for free. Come here, you took the wrong plane home, buddy. And I get it, it's not ideal to lose out on players for free, especially in that sort of manner, but come on. Lane Peterson was an add-on in the Ethan Bear trade. He wasn't the meat and potatoes of that deal. And while he was okay playing with Elias Pedersen and Andre Kuzmenko, this was just a replacement level player that was up here for the purpose of just seeing if he had something to show for at the NHL level. And to his credit, I think he does have some potential, which is why he got claimed in the first place. But I'd be lying to you if I said that the sky was falling down because Lane Peterson, of all people, got claimed on the waiver wire. Here's point number five on this Reddit post made, the Rick Tockett hiring. Maybe this one was due to ownership saying they had to wait until mid-season, but it could also be that they didn't want the coaching bump before they were actually entirely out of the race. Now, it's very funny how this user is giving the benefit of the doubt to this Canucks team that, hey, they're going to get a coaching bump. They're going to go out there and start winning games because of the coaching bump, but nah, I mean, you saw what this team did against an actually good team in Seattle. They absolutely crapped the bed. Sure, they can beat bad teams like Columbus and Chicago, but walk it like a talk, it is not going to go out there and change this team so drastically with its consistency issues and its engagement that they're going to turn it around and make the playoffs. Here's point number five. Are we at five or six? Did I say five already? No, this is point number six. Draft picks and prospects. We could have made trades for immediate help to improve our defense and goaltending situation, but we haven't. Now, you can call out the Dickinson trade, but that trade wasn't more so to get young guys. It's not because Riley Stillman is amazing. It's because they just wanted to free up that cap space, and Dickinson was really, really bad. That's improper sort of asset management, but, you know, you could see the intention was not there because they wanted to improve the team, quote-unquote. They wanted cap space, and they paid a second-round pick to do it. Here's point number seven, the final one, Bo Horvat. Publicly stated that they are going to move their captain is not consistent with win now. They could very easily fit him in by making moves that might hurt us long term, throwing in draft picks or prospects to get rid of other contracts. We're 20, 26, and 3 with a minus 28 goal differential and zero moves have been made to improve this. We are tanking. They made a big mistake in thinking this core was ready for a playoff push and signed JT too early, but they've definitely seen the writing on the wall and they're making the best of it now. And then there's the edit because there are a lot of comments going out there replying to this post saying, hey, some people are making a fair point that we're not actively tanking by getting worse. I do believe we will see that happen at the deadline. It's tough to make deals mid-season without taking back similar contracts. Also, some seem to be caught up on the idea that I'm saying that we're tanking as part of a rebuild like Chicago. I'm not saying that. I'm giving management credit that they've seen this team for what it is and are not actively mortgaging the future. They're not allowed to rebuild because ownership won't let them, but they're not panicking and making things worse. It's a low bar, I know, but credit where it's due. Now, this is the first comment that I thought was really good to go out there and see. Timothy Robbins says, Like most things in life, watch what they do, not what they say. Actions speak louder than words. 
And uh, Protected X says, yeah, no, they did say it. Rutherford said, I thought we were tanking. And at the time, most of us just read that as a facetious comment, because he couldn't have really just said that seriously. Right? Now, tanking aside, whether or not it is true or it isn't true that the Canucks management are putting themselves in a position to do worse, it's very true that in the lens of the trades that they're making, it's more so what they're not making that indicates the direction of the team. And I thought it was a really interesting post to bring up here. I definitely do agree with some of the points, but I want you to let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this overall assessment that the team, by virtue of not making trades, by sitting tight, by holding on to what they have and preparing for a pretty nasty trade deadline where they're gonna fire sale everybody, this is tanking. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Airlines Trolls 99. And Bye.